walls. They really do make your jobs around the home much easier. It can be confusing, though, coming to a place like this because there is a wide array of tools. So what do you do? 50-50, phone a friend, or you like me, ask a team member. I am looking at everything that cuts in the garden, and that is a pretty long list. So I'm going to ask Jake to help me cut through the confusion. Can you help me? Absolutely. All right, so what is the number one question that you get asked when it comes to pruning and cutting? So the number one question I get is um, where to start and what basic tools I need. OK. Um, so the first off, you can't go wrong with a basic pruner, mm. um, which does everything that you need. I'll have one of those in the basket, please. Thank you. That's all I need, but rather than tell you what all these things do, I'm going to show you back in my own garden and I can get some pruning done. And everyone wins. The first thing any good gardener needs is a cracking pair of secateurs. Now, these are incredibly versatile. You can use them for tip pruning, things like this. You can use them for formative pruning on plants like hydrangeas, but really you only want to go up to the thickness of your ring finger, no bigger, or you put too much strain on the mechanism and you'll damage your secateurs. Now is a perfect time of the year to be doing your pruning because you can see your plants as most things have died down. This strobilanthes is lovely to propagate from. Now what you want to be doing is actually removing quite a lot of the leaves, like this. And you could use scissors, but I'm still using my secateurs just to cut through the top of these leaves. That reduces any loss through transpiration. Now, when you pop this into some potting mix, you want to pop it down the side of the pot, not in the middle, because the heat of the pot will promote more root growth. You also want to keep it in a nice, warm spot. If you leave it outside, it might be a bit cold. So pop it inside, and soon enough, this will be cracking on with growth. If you've got something a bit bigger, you're going to need a pair of loppers. Now, these will cut up to about 25, 30 millimetres, and these ones are ratchets, which just means it's really easy to do the cut. Using loppers, it's really important to reduce the branch you're cutting back rather than go straight in and chop it off of the tree. That way, it's not going to get top heavy and crush your plants around you, and you'll get a nice, clean cut. Now, these loppers and the secateurs are what's called bypass, which means this blade will bypass the fixed blade like that, and it gives you a nice, clean cut so you don't let any infection into the plant. If, however, you've got dead wood, you want an anvil set. So this is the anvil, and the blade simply crushes down on it, and it cuts through dead wood much easier. When it comes to hedges and topiary, you want to get yourself a really nice pair of hedging shears. Now, you need to keep these well oiled and sharpen them every time you use them, and only cut leaves with them. Don't cut any branches with them, or you'll distort them, and they'll become useless. When it comes to pruning larger things like branches, you need to be using a saw. Now, I like a handsaw with a pull action, which means it only cuts when you pull it towards you. That makes it much safer if you're up on a step stool, and it just makes it more manageable. When you're cutting something like this, you need to use a three-step process. So with your first cut, what you want to do is cut in an upward action, and you want to get to about halfway through. You don't want the blade to get caught, leave it like that. Your second cut is then on the outside, so when it breaks, it'll tear down to that point. So you can see the step cut that we've got in there now. The final cut is to take off this piece of wood. Now, there's a place on the branch called the collar. It sort of looks like a skivvy, and you really want to leave that on. That contains all the hormones that's going to protect the tree if pathogens try to get in. So I don't want to cut that off straight through there. I want to bring my cut forward and leave that on the tree. Now, if you need to do all of that at height, don't run the safety risk and climb a ladder. Get yourself one of these. This is a telescopic pole saw. It can go pretty high up. And when you're pruning, 
keep your eyes up, because stuff's falling down. So getting the right tools is going to get your garden ready for spring. And you can put all your cuttings in the compost. And then all you need is some personal assistance to tidy up for you. Come on, guys, hurry up. Well, no dinner. 